Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. This is gonna be a get ready with me video, but it's featuring products that I feel are fun to apply, okay? There's some element of satisfaction with the application of these products. Um, it might be due to the packaging, it might be like the texture and feel of the product, it might be the fact that just blending it in and working with it is fun, but I see something fun in everything I'm gonna put on today. Some of it's drugstore, some of it's high end. I've got it all in my little bag here where I like to group things, and I do feel like doing your makeup in the morning should be an enjoyable process. If you're rushing yourself to death, if you barely have time and it's becoming stressful, you know, think about how you could just give yourself an extra like five minutes toward getting ready and you might just enjoy it more. I think part of the reason why I come up here and I enjoy shooting these videos and I enjoy putting my makeup on is that I have the time to enjoy it and I make that time for myself by getting up pretty early. And that probably goes for about anything in life. You know, if you're forcing yourself to just rush through it and get it done, do you really have the time to simmer in it and sit back and say, this is enjoyable. You know, I'm appreciating this moment. I'm present in this moment. No, you're probably getting stressed and worried about the next thing, right? So just think about the difference that a few extra minutes can make and um, that may make the whole process all the more enjoyable for you as well. But um, I'm going to jump in here with my primer. And I think this one is really fun to put on this one from Maybelline. It's the Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup in Light. Um, this is often compared to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. You just like click it so you got some product coming up there. And then what do I like so much about this spongy tip? Like you just run it all over your skin. It's like, yeah, that's, that's satisfying. That's fun. I know e.l.f. has a similar product to this that's recently come out. And I was looking at their website for it, but they were sold out of most shades. But anyway, this product does definitely give you like that little hint of skin tone color, but overall a nice glowy primed finish. So I'm just using my brush to sort of blend that all around because like I said, there's a real appearance to this primer on the skin. You've got the glow, you've got that little bit of color. She's trying to really do something on the skin and I think it's satisfying and fun to just dab that on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's like a real spongy soft tip there. It's a jumbo size of the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealers. They used to have that Age Rewind makeup. Do they still make that? That was the OG foundation having that tip on it. Okay, speaking of foundation, I love the feel of swiping on a stick. There's something so satisfying about just taking your stick foundation and zipping it across the skin and then getting it blended out probably with a beauty blender. I enjoy that process so much. So I have my Wet n Wild Photo Focus stick here in soft beige. This is definitely a product that I like repurchased, reappreciated, you know? Oh, look at it, just swipe it on there. I love the way that goes on. Just deposits the right amount of stuff. But I actually did a video featuring a lot of different stick makeup from Wet n Wild and how great it was. And um, that was kind of one of the key rediscoveries. But I'm taking my beauty blender and I'm just bouncing that in. And this is, this is truly fun for me. I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. Like this is a way to kick off a Monday morning, yes. You're just pressing that in and you get to enjoy that coverage and that look all over the skin. I'm really liking it paired with that primer, like, cause I've got a little glow going on now. The end look is reminding me kind of like, I just put on Kosas Revealer, the combo of these two products. The Beauty Blender just feels good. Like it's soft, it's squishy, but at the same time, there's just enough stiffness to kind of like work against the product. Just, a, just enough. This is blending so well. And I think that's part of it too. What makes something fun is when the product is just so effective and so good at what it does and it presents no struggles to you. It behaves how it should and that makes it fun. I'm just making sure I got it blended all around the sides. I'm loving that look. It's crazy how much glow that primer brought to the mix using it with this stick. I don't think I've ever done that specific pairing before. Another product in the same vein, like I just think sticks are fun, um, the Bobbi Brown Corrector Stick in Bisque. I have loved this one. This is also really nice because it has that whoop, bonus points for magnetic closures. And I just swipe that on like this deepest little area here. I really benefit from that and then maybe a little bit right out at the corner. So this is pretty much a strictly under eye product for me because it has that peachy kind of corrective tone. And then I can just once again go in with my beauty blender or I can use a brush. 
Sometimes I use that e.l.f. double-ended brush to really get in there. But it makes such a difference in the brightness of that inner corner. So I'm going to use this little tip now. Boop, boop, boop. There can be miracles. That really works. It truly helps with discolored, dark areas around the eyes. I love it. And there's lots of different tones. So if your skin tone's a little deeper, you might go for a little bit deeper corrector shade. But satisfying and fun. Also, what I feel is really satisfying is just popping on a really full coverage concealer and blending it out and just being like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that looks really good. Elf Camo Concealer, just the regular. Um, medium Sand is my shade, and I'm just going to put on some of this. This doesn't take a lot. As I've said many times, you know, it might just be a couple little dots right in here, and then some out here, and then this is kind of our all-over-the-face concealer so we get that redness that likes to hide in there around the side of the nose got a little zit right there boop I need some coffee so again with the beauty blender dabbing this around and just enjoying the full coverage nature of that like I find full coverage foundations kind of satisfying in the same way but you go over it and you're just like yeah that's that's really nice that looks really perfected and I know it will wear well so that also makes me happy so it's Monday morning as I shoot this, and I gotta say, I'm waking up with the day thinking, what's gonna happen on Bold and the Beautiful today? That show, I know it's a lot of people's lunch hour show. It's like just a half hour soap that's on CBS. It comes on at 1230 where I live. We just got crazy things going down. I won't bore all y'all with it if you're, you know, not watching it, but we got people who are alive who aren't known to be alive. There are just going to be some shockers and bombs dropped this week, and I just can't wait for it. Okay, so I really blend over that concealer a good amount, and I think that's part of what helps me, like, have a really good staying power experience, even with fuller coverage concealers like this. You know, I've prepped my under eye area well, I've used eye cream and stuff, but I've also taken the time to really mush that stuff in there and continue to go over it a little bit and that picks up any excess product. And now we're looking at, I think, really well covered skin in that area, wherever I needed to put it. Thank you, Beauty Blender. You made this fun as well for me. For a powder, well, I really use and enjoy a lot of different loose powders. I wouldn't say it's the funnest step or something I get a ton of enjoyment out of. You know, powders like that can be kind of a pain, really. But I do really love my Kosas Cloud set, and I like the baked nature of this little guy. This is the breezy shade. I think it's the second to the lightest shade. And I'm gonna use my new little Morphe under eye bullet brush, the M536, the new replacement for the e.l.f. Small Tapered because it's just the right size and pretty much the right feel. You could also go for the e.l.f. Highlighter brush, it's just a, a bit bigger. But I like taking this powder up on this area and I also like using it at the end of my makeup to set. There's just something so undetectable about it and look I'm going over the nose there and like what pores what pores they're not there it's just a really flawless looking highly satisfying powder to put on that never feels like too thick or anything I can totally tell where I've kind of flattened that dome you know this is a domed up baked product and it's just the perfect texture I gotta say really happy with this product I remember Boise Beauty raving about it and I think part of when I was really sold on getting this was when she showed a completely used up one and she promptly went and repurchased another I'm like dang that was loved okay so I've got that on everywhere and I feel like my under eye is now set a little bit but it's not like it doesn't even feel super duper dry, but it's just it's just the right powder. I love that stuff. It's fun. Um, it's not as fussy as a loose powder. I enjoy putting it on. Now for bronzer, I pulled out my What Shady Beaches from Wet n Wild. Now I went on TikTok over the weekend and I shared like my top five drugstore bronzers, and there is some controversy because bronzers don't just universally satisfy everyone the same. You know, some people were like that one is so orange. I don't think it's orange. You know, I think it's rich. I think it almost has a bit of a reddish thing going on in it, and that's why I like it. Um, but it's satisfying to put on because, you know, it's pigmented, it's kind of rich, and I immediately see results. Now, I think they have other ones, other tones, that might 
maybe appear more orangey, but I just, I really like this one. I think it's very natural on me, but not everyone's gonna have the same outcome with a bronzer. That's what I know. Look at that up around the hairline, looking so good. And it's just like minimal applications needed. I should have been wearing my goat headband, dang. Um, I can use it to contour with. Works well like that too. See, look, I, I love this bronzer. I love it. I can kind of get it like contour with it, but then sort of let it come up like a little bit just to that area, just on top of the cheek. There's something really pretty about it there as well. There we go, we're bronzed. It was quick. I'm bronzed, I'm contoured, I'm really enjoying the look. I always love my outcome with that, so that makes it fun for me. There's always that product with a video idea that like spurred it on, that kind of got the wheels turning on the subject. And for me, with this one, um, a product I was thinking about really having fun with and really just experiencing that satisfaction, that enjoyment of putting it on, it's this Patrick Ta blush palette. Now, it's one of those things that I kind of keep back here are these face palettes that you know I just make them easy to reach for and they don't take up as much room in a drawer that way by having them out there but this palette is so fun so enjoyable I love every little duo here what it is is three cream blushes and then your powders are right down here coordinating and I believe they sell all of these individually like a duo of that a duo of that um, and so on on Sephora's website but I really get a kick out of this product and I probably don't talk about it enough but it's fun as heck uh, so today I think we're gonna do gosh it's hard to choose because I absolutely love Love all of these. Let's do the middle one. This is She's Vibrant. So I go into that cream with my little, you know, Sephora 56 brush, and we're getting this pretty corally blush on there. Oh, it's so pretty. And this is just like, it, it's the same vibe with all of them. They're all fun to put on, they're all pigmented. They all look really pretty. There's a little bit of dewiness you can just kind of see after putting on these cream blushes. Can you pick up on that? And you definitely wouldn't have to layer on the powder, but I think that's really fun. I enjoy the layering and plus, you know, it just helps the staying power all the more, right? So there's my cream and then we can drop that lid and go down to this powder and just let that kind of lay on top here and have a pretty bright blush moment. And you may be like, Em, that, that blush is just going to be too strong for me to wear. That's fine, um, but I really like it. And I'm going to go over the nose with that color. And I'm just really going to get it going. And everything will come together. That's all I can say. I get excited. My video is about fun makeup. We're having a good time and I just throw on the blush. If you do feel like it's a little much or it got a little low, you can always go in with a little more powder and kind of like redefine slightly and it will usually be just enough. Or you can just take a little of that cloud set and just kind of lay it down on top. But I promise it all ends up working in the end. For highlighter, I feel like there are so many great highlights, so many that I enjoy in a variety of textures. But there's probably nothing more satisfying and more fun than just putting on a powder highlight that really is what you see is what you get, you know? And I think Catrice Sungasm is just at the top of my list for great highlighters. It's this giant pan and I believe you can find this on Amazon. It used to be an Ulta product you could count on. Like, look at it. And it's not chunky, but it is very, very glowy. It doesn't mess around, okay? And you get an absolute gleam right there on the top of your cheeks or your forehead or wherever you want to put it. I mean, you've got an instant glowy look. Even if you've got skin where you're like, I don't want to go around feeling tacky, this powder highlight will give you that look without that feel. And it's just so fun to put that on and just see the impact, right? Yeah, the application of highlighter, it's like 40% looks, 60% satisfaction of application. I'm gonna a little right in here. It's fun. Are we having fun yet? I'm having a good time. And now we're going to put on some Fix Plus, you guys, because wouldn't you have to agree that this has a scent, like an X Factor scent, that it's really hard to nail down, but it's not just like anything else. The original Fix Plus. I also like this. I like that little mechanism where you, it's locked and it's unlocked. And it's locked and it's unlocked. I like that. Does anybody else enjoy that? Spa-like, like the lightest bit of a 
gently fresh perfume scent, but it's one of a kind. It's something where I could be blind, like smell this scent, and I would instantly say Fix Plus. It's identifiable. And then maybe after I put that on, we give a few little bounces here. And what I noticed happening after this step is just everything really getting in tune with one another, you know? It's like, hey, cloud set, meet this highlighter, meet this blush. Hey, I even picked a satisfying brow product to put on you guys, and I don't really know why I picked this one other than I like that it's called Ash Brown, and I like that we've basically nicknamed it Nice Ash, and so we say that every time I pull it out. That's really all. She's the product that works fine. We love her, we accept her with her flaws, like the crayon smell. There's no frills to the packaging, but she's just got a nice sense of humor, you know, and we can just appreciate that. This is a thicker, like teardrop shaped brow pencil, by the way, if you're not familiar, the retractable brow pencil from Wet n Wild. I do get a really quick brow out of it, which does satisfy me and which does cause me to have a fun time. You know, she's not difficult to apply. It's not tedious. And yeah, I've just gotten real comfortable with this pencil. I was really looking forward to doing this video. I actually woke up in the middle of the night thinking I'm, I'm ready to get up and shoot this video right now, but I made myself sleep a little longer. That's when you know it's a fun video idea. I had Pizza Hut pizza last night. I know, I know, authentic, blah, blah, blah. I love Pizza Hut pizza. Okay, it takes me back. Pizza Hut breadsticks have not changed. We had to drive half an hour in either direction to get to a Pizza Hut when I was a child. And, you know, there was the Book It program. You're reading your books, you get your personal pan pizza. Anybody else familiar with that? The little badge, the little pin that you had with the stickers and stuff? It was great. I love Pizza Hut. And the breadsticks are exactly the same. Everything about them, size, shape, texture, seasoning, the sauce that you're dipping it in. It's like they've really kept that the same. And then now they're putting out like the original looking Pizza Hut logo, kind of retro looking boxes. Um, I know most Pizza Huts, I think most of them are like carry outs now, but we got that last night after a strenuous day in the pool. <laughs> Catching kids, they want to be caught, they want to be thrown, they want to blah, 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 blah. Can't always just turn on chill mode and pretend like you have no responsibilities. It's still fun, but when you're done, you're like, man, I could eat a horse. And so you get some Pizza Hut pizza and breadsticks. It's like, wow. I just, that hits different, you know? It hits different for the fact that it's after pool time, but it hits all the same because the pizza and the breadsticks taste the same. Okay, I didn't pick out a brow gel, but we'll go with NYX Control Freak because as a recovering control freak, I just like to use this. I've got a lot to say on the topic of like wanting to control things and being a work from home mom and knowing when to turn on and off that vibe because, okay, I control my channel, right? I, I run this thing. Nobody else is going to do it for me. Like I, it's a one woman show with this. And then, you know, I'm kind of running the domestic things of the house, uh, dealing with the children's schedules, everything we need, like groceries, all that jazz. But like your husband doesn't want you to control him. And so then you have to like turn off the switch and just be like, you know. There are times to control and there are times to lean back. And I was thinking about this topic and I do want to do a video like just about things I struggle with, just to share, you know, I think it's important. I'm gonna meanwhile throw on some Milani eyeshadow primer cause that's fun. But I was just thinking of how like, as I grew up in my very formative years, like in high school and college, I was always in situations where I had to be in charge. Mainly they were cheerleading oriented. I get on my high school squad, everybody's like, oh, this coach, you know, she, she makes it hard. It's going to be tough. She wants a lot out of you. And I was like, yeah, I want to be part of that. Got into it. She lit my fire for cheerleading. That's what started it all, you know? And then after about a year, she left. Myself and some other cheerleaders felt a certain amount of weight to keep things going in the same way, you know? And then college. Once again, I'm reeled in by a phenomenal coach. And then after about a year, she gone. And again, the weight of running camps, fundraisers, doing all the things. And in a way, because I love cheerleading so much, it never felt burdensome to me. I felt happy to do these things, happy to step into a leadership role. Like it just felt like, you know, 
natural. And those situations can bring you to a very like take charge mentality in most of your life. Like I'm, I'm fine doing it by myself. I'm cool with running the show. That feels comfortable to me. To get in relationships in, in all areas of life, that mentality is not necessary. You know, you need to know where you, where you channel it and where you drive it up and where you like turn up the volume on it and then when you turn down the volume on it, right? Because it's like, okay, I'm running YouTube stuff, I'm running home stuff, I'm running kids stuff, I'm running husbands that No, no, Bub is a fiercely independent guy. You, you ain't running him, okay? <laughs> and there have been times where I've messed up on that, for sure. Anyways, we're moving on on what's fun to put on the eyes. And I've got to say, we're back to Patrick Ta again, because I thought about this. There were so many things that I could say I had fun putting that on the eyes, you know, but... This one really has taken the cake for months now, and it's the Major Dimension 2 palette for a lot of reasons. It incorporates a lot of loves here. Texture variants, so you do have a couple of creams which are fun to throw in there and do some layering, but I love the experience of a spectrum of mattes that you're going to start blending and intensifying and working with, and then those spotlighting shimmers too that are really, really satisfying to put on. Like, this is a very very fun palette for me. You know, this is my video of what's fun for me. You might have a different bunch of things that would be fun for you, and that's fine. Anyways, I'm gonna start my layering up of, of mattes here, and I'm gonna really enjoy every moment. So I'm taking that second lightest one, and it's just the pigmentation is nice, everything is smooth, and they're just my kind of shades as well, which really plays into the love of all of this. Look at this mauve rosy. This has to have been one of my favorite purchases, you know, outside of drugstore stuff, which really gives me the thrill. This palette was just very well done. And I never did get his original one. The one that's more like just neutrals, bronzy. I'm not sure if I should. I just enjoy this one so much. I can't think of anything else that he would make holding a candle to it, but I just really like these colors. Look at that. That's just that one shade there. And then maybe we say, hey, let's go a little deeper. This shade looks like it has a little more like real berry in it that you can really see. So we'll add a little of that. And this is where I'm just having a ball because I like, I like the evolution of a matte look on my eyes. I like the additions of shades. I like how pretty and smooth it is when they come together. And I'm just using my Profusion Crease Brush, by the way. But I think a lot of what I was talking about before, um, just using a bare brush here to blend out some edges. I've learned about like masculine and feminine characteristics and how like we all have both tendencies like in ourselves, in our being. We're not all purely in our feminine mode. We're not all purely in our masculine mode, but there is kind of a balance within us all. And you know, Bub is possessing the masculine desire to do and fix and solve and blah, blah, blah. And I have a lot of that in me too, but I could sometimes do a better job of, of leaning into that feminine of lean back, relax, receive, whatever. You know, I'm not an expert on all this, but it's just interesting to think about those balances and how they work in your relationship relationships, you know. Okay, next, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about actually putting on some of the creams. I'm going to do a little bit of the deepest one. And we're just going to dab this on the outside, outer part of the lid. And these are really easy to work with, you guys. Don't be intimidated by them. But like when you build a darker powder shadow on top, the intensity is so nice. So that's just a little bit of the darkest cream shade. I'm putting it on the outer part of my eyelid there, definitely on the lid. It may reach the crease, it may go a little bit beyond, but it's mainly on the lid. And then maybe I take another finger, finger applicator, and I go to that shade that's just on top of it, which is more like really dusty, rosy kind of shade. And maybe that gets on the lid there. So we've got a little bit of a base now happening. Does anybody else love hearing like airplanes or helicopters in the sky? Like I always stop and I'm like, I think that's an airplane. Why do I get a kick out of that? I don't, I don't know. Just like knowing it's there. I'm gonna go into this dark matte. And this is fun because you're placing that on top of a little bit, just a little bit of tackiness 
from that cream base. And I tell you what, the staying power of this look, y'all, that's another reason to love it. Wears all day. Even those sparkles, like the sparkly shades staying in place, love that. We're just working in some richness here. I've also used the darkest shimmer kind of in this zone, and that's pretty too. But we're getting that matte plugged right in there, and then I'll probably bring in the small pointed brush just to help me form the shape a little more. But that dark shade is really dark and just like plummy, you know, like actual plum. They're not always super purple. Sometimes they're a little bit dark reddish. I'm just taking my small pointed brush and I'm actually, this can really help the blending of things. I'm not going to go straight into that darkest color. I'm going to go one up from it. Okay, that one that looks kind of like a deep terracotta. And then I'm going to find myself blending with that shade over this outer corner zone. And it's actually going to be a really pretty kind of softening effect. Defining, but also softening. You know, we're working the shape out, but oh, is that pretty. Same thing over here. I find myself taking it to the deepest part of the crease and then running around in circular motions. Okay, and then that bare brush running all around. At this point, maybe we apply an actual highlight. Maybe we go to this soft, kind of just hint of peach in it color and let that run around the absolute outer part of this. Oh, that's pretty. Really nice, you guys. Really love that. Now, for those of you who have been patiently waiting for a shimmer to go on, um, I'm going to use my Morphe brush. It's the M709. It's smaller than the big one I used on the outside of the lid and it's a little bit pointed. And I'm always drawn to this shade because sometimes it looks a little bit golden, sometimes it looks more pink. It just depends on how it's hitting the light. It's fun. So I pick up some of that and I will kind of pack that on the inner part of my eyelid here. And this is really fun because it, it's so nice to get a a matte framework going and then you plug in that spotlight shade, right? So fun. So I'm doing sort of a combination of swiping across my lid, but also pressing and patting on, making sure that that shade that has some little individual sparkle really gets set in there. And see how there's a pretty pinkiness that's really showing at this point? I feel like the pink of the shimmer really stands out now. And this is just, this is absolutely so fun. If you like playing with different textures. If you like the rosy but not too pinky color tone, I think you would love this palette. And you can swipe on with your finger as well, and that works great with these. Um, but I just kind of like the control, <laughs> the control of the brush. Oh, it's just this pretty pinky glaze kind of. Pinky but yet also golden because it, it, again, it depends on how that one's catching the light. Now I want to take a little bit of the shadow from this palette and do a little lower lash line. I'm gonna use though a really controlled brush here, this E21 smudge from Sigma. It's really small. Actually, we'll go to this shade, the deepest shimmer. It's really pretty. I've actually used that in a lot of my looks with this palette. And I'm gonna just let that come down and around. Mm, hard to beat. Hard to beat. And don't we love the Patrick Ta packaging too? Like, I, yes, it has gotten a lot of fingerprints on it, but there's a nice, beautiful simplicity to it. Like this is just like my other one, only this has a little border on it. Otherwise they're like the exact same size and shape. Now for eyeliner, do I really enjoy this stuff? <laughs> If I were to rank my enjoyment of the different steps of makeup, eyeliner would probably rank kind of low, but I do enjoy the satisfaction of a nice black liquid line. Actually, this Essence Lash Princess in the waterproof, I haven't even touched the regular version. I'm just, you know, I want my liner to be waterproof because then I really tend to feel like it is less affected by tearing up or having to rub your eye or anything like that. And this one also, you know, it's got this big old tip, but yet it is very tapered down, very small at the actual tip. And it's thicker. It's thicker to hold on to. And it's actually easier to do the job with because of that, I think. Thicker pen, little chunk pen. Okay, so we're going to go across the upper lash line here. Yeah, I am going to ask you to go over that sparkle and you're going to do it. Yep. Yes, yeah, see, that's nice. 
That feels good. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just lining the lash line. I really do feel like this is easier to hold. Please weigh in if you've tried the new Lash Princess liquid liners. Like, there's a thickness and it's like there's more stability. And I don't know, well, maybe I've had one somewhere along the line, a, a thicker eyeliner thing, but this one just, it, it works. For lashes, um, I do love putting on a false lash. I probably will put one on today. But mascara-wise, I just like mascaras that give me instant impact. You know, that's why I've loved Superhero for so long. Like, I feel like it instantly impacts my lashes. It builds them up thick and long without a lot of swipes. Um, but I'm kind of low on my current tube, but this Lawless One and Done kind of has the same vibe, you know, especially now that it's gotten a little age on it. Got a little dust on the bottle. She's getting sweeter with time. That's right, my friends. So I just swipe it on and it pretty much does the job as quick as I could want it to. Plus, I love the brush. The brush has the little spikies on the end and so you can hold it at any angle and you can hit lashes. So that's nice. The packaging is kind of cool too. I don't know if it'll even come off on camera, but it's like there's eyes looking through this sort of grooved area. Can you see that? She's spying. Take our little spiky brush and just go up in there and watch them get loaded down quick, but not weighed down. There's a difference. There's a difference between getting them loaded down and getting them weighed down. The weighing down tends to happen after lots and lots of too many swipes. Lots of too many. Where am I? See, that's so pretty to me. In reality, that, that happens so quick on that eye. so quickly gets on there. That's making it fun for me. This is not a video where great lash would qualify. See, I can really hit that inner part there. How pretty is this mascara? I could even build now over here on this eye if I want to do a little bit. I don't think I'm even going to do the falsies. I don't think it's necessary. My memory card chose to turn off on me there, but I all I did was added a little Cali Ray come hell or high water to the lower lashes, and now we have a very satisfying lip look to do for several different reasons, okay? Um, number one, for a lipstick, a lot of this is packaging, guys, but this Fenty lipstick, the shade is called Mother Lover, and it's a nude. You twist the bottom here. By the way, there's a dupe for this by Revlon. I did a whole TikTok about that, but you just twist, and it pops up, and you pull it out, and then there's something real nice when you put it back in, okay? So I like that. I also really do like this color. Uh, it's like a cream lipstick, but it's not real shiny. You're gonna smooth that on, okay? It feels velvety and nice. And has a nice little smell to it too. Just a teensy bit fruity, okay? There's that. Then, one of my simple pleasures in makeup is taking a lip liner, especially with a nude lip like this, taking a lip liner that's just a little bit deeper and really making the color my own. So this is Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner in Nude, but it's deeper, right? It's like that, okay? And that is what I really like going around my lip. And by the way, I was watching somebody on TikTok last night just completely go, she went above quite a bit, only on the inner parts of her lips, like the, the middle top part and the middle bottom part, and it looks really good. Like just a little bit of overlining. Let's see how that deepens things up slightly. I deepen it here too, and I deepen down here. Okay, see we've played with that color just a bit now. And then I put a gloss over top of that that really just makes it gleam. I love this lifter gloss from Maybelline in Pearl. And then there's one from Essence that's really, really similar to this called Milky Way. I think the reason why I put this into my bag for this look is just because I like this feel of the, the bigness of the packaging. Now they're totally playing us because we're only getting that much width of product here, but there must have been, you know there must have been some kind of consumer study where they're like, people really like bigger stuff. <laughs> And so they like package this doubly around the outside. It's way bigger than it needs to be, but something about that does feel nice. But they have this big applicator and I just, because it is so light and pearly and I don't want lipstick to get on that and then mess with the whole tube of stuff, I just use my finger with it and get it all the way to the outside, okay? Look at that nude lip. That's my kind of nude lip. 
And then lastly, guys, I really like doing this toward the end of any look. I take the Kosas Cloud Set again, and I just add a little more powder right in here, right in this zone, kind of where blush meets lower lash line, and maybe over the nose a little. Sometimes products have to sit on your skin for a minute for you to really see where that's necessary. But this is my finished look. I guess I'll take my hair down. Really pleased with how it all turned out. I had a great time doing this look, you guys. And really, I mean, there was no rhyme or reason as I look at the products I use. You know, some were drugstore, some were high end, but they're just all things that I enjoy putting on, things that I think are satisfying to apply. Sometimes it's just the ease of application. Sometimes it's the packaging. Sometimes it's just the fact that the product delivers on the aspect of makeup that you really enjoy working with. Like for me on the eyes, you know, the layering up of those mattes and then popping on a shimmer, that's fun for me. So I'm drawn to that palette. But let me know in the comments section what things feel this way to you, feel satisfying and fun to use. I would absolutely love to hear and I would love to see any other creators who are watching this video. If you'd like to do it too, go for it. I mean, this is a fun one. So thank you for your time, everybody. And I will see you again.